Hi everybody, this is Ruth Royal from Youth Pledge for Employers and we're really delighted to be here today with Bradley Dorrington who is owner at the wine cellar Berry St Edmunds. Hi Bradley, lovely to meet you. Hi Ruth, lovely to be here, thanks for having me. No problem. So first of all, tell us a bit about the wine cellar and what your business does. Yeah, sure. So, so we're obviously hospitality, we've obviously got a focus on wine, that kind of goes in the name. Um, but so essentially, we opened in August last year. Um, wow. We are a 50 cover wine bar right in the heart of Bury St Edmunds. So for those that know Bury St Edmunds, the butter market, where the market is on a, on a Wednesday and Saturday, we're, that's right on our doorstep. So we're, we're really central. We've got a great location. Um, I've been in the hospitality industry for 10 years now, and wow. I've always loved to one, do something myself and have my own business because you know, yeah. that's, that's natural kind of progression through. But also, I've always had a really keen focus on the European way of eating and drinking. So yeah, we've got right. about 100 wines on the list and um, we've got over 60 by the glass, uh, small plates, cold food, charcuterie, cheese. So it's very social. So you can come, you know, a group of people, sit there, have some sharing boards on the table, enjoy some wine. But uh, we've also got beers, spirits, cocktails, soft drinks. We've got non-alcoholic offering as well. So it's, really, it's always been really important to me to... Um, have a real overview and, and capture something for everyone. Um, so, you know, people can come in if they're driving, they can still enjoy a non-alcoholic glass of wine yeah. or a non-alcoholic beer, et cetera, or you know, come in with friends, family, colleagues. And I think it was, it, it, don't get me wrong, it was a risk, um, you know, opening post-pandemic, yeah. it's, it's, it's tough out there. Um, but I've always lived along fortune, fortune favours the bold. I've always lived, lived my life by. Um, so, you know, let's, let's go for it and see what happens. And yeah, touch wood, um, it's been, we actually celebrated six months on Sunday. So we opened the 5th oh, of August. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, so six months was 5th of February. And including this week, now we've done over, you know, over 7,000 people have walked through the door. Um, wow. We've sold over 5,500 glasses of wine, not including bottle sales, just by the glass. We actually only have 72 glasses, so that's a lot of cleaning and a lot of polishing. Um, but, you know, that, and when you look at the numbers like that and you look back at six months, six months flies by and you look back and you go, we've actually achieved so much in that six months. And it's a really small team. I mean, it's literally me and one other person, but obviously we'll, we'll go on to that in a minute. Um, you know, but it, it, it's just great fun. No days, no two days are the same. And you know, I, I come from, obviously I said hospitality, 10 years worth, but... When I was actually at sixth form, um, I was studying double maths, physics and chemistry at A-level. I, I was going into astronautical engineering and wow. I decided to have a change. I, I did a, I, I went to go into an apprenticeship actually in, in engineering and just I, I did a two week trial. Um, it wasn't for me. I, I, it, it just didn't go well. And I think that's really important for you know all of those out there yeah. that, that are going to listen to this and, and hear this life doesn't set you on a straight path and you don't have to stick to what you, you, you know. I mean, if you're looking at what you want to do for the rest of your life at 15, 16, that it's, you can't make that decision. Like you may have great passions and you may have something you really want to go into, but actually you may get into it just like I did and go, actually, do you know what? This isn't for me. And I was working in my local pub and I really enjoyed that. So I went to a college, went, did a level three hospitality course, did a hotel management course, moved around the country with it. Um, and then found my now wife and settled in Bury St Edmunds and did a few other things before opening the wine cellar. So it's really kind oh, of full circle, just, I suppose. It's so interesting to hear about people's journeys. And I think that's such an important message that actually, you know, you're not necessarily fixed on a path age 16 no, I mean some people yeah. are but most people aren't most people don't yeah. think like me you know I'm gonna grab to be a project yeah. manager <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, that, and that's and that's not to take away from those people that do know what they want to yeah, do because that's absolutely. incredible like at 16 if I could have if I was there at 16 going do you know what I'm gonna do this for the rest of my life you it's a it's a big big commitment and actually yeah. do you know what 10 years 10 years time if you change your mind you change your mind it doesn't matter you know yeah. you work another thing I've always kind of said to to people is you know you're at school and education for, you know, let's say the first 20 years of your life or, you know, you're, you're a child or an infant and yeah. then you, you go into education, whether you then go to college, apprenticeship, university, whatever it may be. And then for the next like 70 percent of your life, you're working. Right. So do something you enjoy. Like Be happy with it. Don't don't just go for the job that pays the most money. Don't just go for the job that you know is the less hours for more money or whatever. You know, don't get me wrong. Money's important, but it's not the main thing. You've got to do what you enjoy. Otherwise, you're just not going to enjoy life like life's for living. So and, and work, unfortunately, rightly or wrongly, is a massive part of that. 
Yeah, oh, absolutely. And it's great. They, there's that old saying, isn't there, that if you um, have a job you love, you never work a day in your life. That, 100%. Uh, so important. 100%. And I guess I'm really interested as well to understand like sort of the different skills that people have in your organisation. I mean, that's a phenomenal amount of covers, etc., that you've done yeah. in such a short space been, of time. Yeah, it's funny. So obviously, as I said, I touched on briefly, there's only two of us. Um, so it's actually me and my brother that now works with me. He, he, mm-hmm. um, he's also in the industry. Uh, he's very cocktail and spirit led and I'm very wine and food led. So we, we, we kind of make a good team. Um, but in, in terms of skills in, in the hospitality industry as a whole, it's about being resilient. It's about being resourceful. Um, a good level of common sense is always a good thing. Uh, you know, we're faced. The hospitality industry is unique in the way that you're doing the same thing day in, day out, but it's totally different day in, day out. You know, you get a customer walk through your door, a guest walk through your door. And you've got to very quickly gauge, do they want to talk? Do they want to just sit there with their friend and chat with their friend? Do they want to talk to me about wine? Do they want to talk to my brother Lewis about food, uh, about cocktails and spirits? You know, So that, as soon as you walk in, you're, you're given this kind of paradox and, and you look at it and you go, OK, how do, what's the best way to handle this kind of person? So, you know, quick thinking is always a good skill to have in hospitality. Um, in terms of qualifications, I mean, I've never found them to be essential for hospitality they're a bonus um you know if you've been to college and, and you know you've gone through the professional cookery course or through to the front of house hospitality supervision level three which is what i did mm. um or then even post education courses in industry you know we've got our wset um which is based on wine and spirits so what's, you, know, sorry, you can go off and do those so know. wine um what does it stand for now put me on that oh, oh, no, i'm so sorry <laughs> That's Hang on, right. let we me double check. Cope. We can cope with we'll double check. I'm guessing wine uh, The wine and spirit. I thought it was right. Wine and Spirit Education Trust. Wow. Um, so essentially they're, they're a body. And so they do a level one, two, three, and I think a four now um, wine course. Um, oh, so you go and you, you learn all about wine, etc. cetera. It's, it's a great course to go on if you want to go into the wine side of the industry, if you want to go into be a you know, sommelier oh, in nice restaurants. Specialization after sort of uh, those sort of general qualifications. Yeah, massive. And and I think as well, I think with hospitality as well. And if there's anyone out there that, that's you know watching this and thinking of going into hospitality, you know, I won't sugarcoat it. It's a hard industry to be in. You know, you you you're there. You you're putting on the you're putting on the smile. You're putting on the charm. It, you're you're essentially acting. And unless you really do love it, like I do, it's just part of my DNA. It's just what I do now. Um, but you know, it's you are acting all day for people. You're making sure they're happy. You know, you're always putting your guests first, which is which is why we do it, right? Um, but at the same time, it is so rewarding. You know, we sit sit there. For example, last night in the wine bar, we had a Californian wine tasting. So I had a, a guy come down from London called Chuck Kramer. Um, he imports wines from California into the UK. Um, and we did six wines. We had forty, well, nearly forty people in the room. And we say to people on those events, we're like, if you book smaller tables, if you're just two of you coming for a ticket, be fully prepared for us to put you together with someone else. By the end of the night, we had two guests, two two lots of two guests, four people in total sharing a table. By the end of the night, they'd share phone numbers. They were going to go away together. They were, it's so rewarding seeing these and and their those friendships and relationships are, are born in your business is it's incredible to see like oh, it's wow. just so rewarding and you walk away from it and you go do you know what that was a great day great buzz great atmosphere it, it's so fun it is such a great industry to be in um but then yeah i mean skills wise like skills are important and and your education is important it always it always will be um but it's an ongoing education in hospitality because yeah. everything's always changing you know i mean wine specifically obviously which is my kind of special speciality i suppose if you wanted to put that down um you know you've got old world wine new world wine and, and you know wines are being made everywhere now like we don't sell traditional wines we, we sell wines from georgia lebanon um we had some israeli wine not so long ago like all, all around the world like wines that you wouldn't even think about if you were looking in a wine shop and that's what I love about it. It's it's teaching me something new every day. Like I go. So you've got to keep thing. on learning. So you might get your level yeah. three front of house qualification. You yeah. might go on and do your WSCT, but, but actually yeah. you keep learning as yeah, part of what every you're day doing. is a learning day. Every day is a learning day. And and you know and and I think one thing I've always said to myself is, and and I've always kind of lived by it. If you ever feel competent, that's when you should change or do something different. Because if you reach the stage of competency, you're not challenging yourself anymore. And like, I want to challenge myself every day. I want to do better than the day before. 
I want to do, do something a bit different than the day before, whether we look at changing a wine, changing the menu, changing something, you know, but it's always a challenge and you want to build your business and, you know, and, and more in a business sense as well, complacency is, is, is your biggest fear. Cause if you, you don't want to be the business that's had the same wine list for six months. You don't want to be the business yeah. that has done the same thing for 10 years. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with those businesses that do, but as a as an individual, as an employee and an employer, you want to challenge yourself, right? Otherwise, you're just going to get yeah. bored and you're not going to do your best. So, you know, if you're always trying to reach that next high, the next, um, you know, the next challenge, the next step up that mountain as such. And then when you get to the mountains, a nice analogy, I suppose, when you get to the summit, you get to the top. What's the next climb? You know, what, what's the next mountain you can climb up? Because there's always another challenge, especially in hospitality, because you know, everything changes all the time. It just sounds like an industry that you are completely passionate about. You obviously touched on sort of some of those softer skills as well, mm. like being resourceful, common sense, resilience. Why do you think they're important? I just think it, in an industry that you're working with people, you've got to be prepared for anything at any time. Like I've had unfortunate sides of the story where you know someone's passed out in their chair and fallen on the floor or they've had too much to drink and they've fallen over it so you've got to be ready to grab the first aid kit get some gloves on and you know perform, yeah. perform first aid until you know first first responders arrive yeah um but at the same time you know you you've got to deal with things compassionately without putting yourself on the lines it's, it's a very yeah. it's a very tricky thing and um, but you you sit there sorry if you see my plaster i've cut my finger this morning it's a unicorn plaster my <laughs> seven-year-old is the only plasters we had in our house <laughs> and, uh, but yeah uh, yeah so we um you know so you've got to you've got to deal with people in a, in a way that makes them feel loved and cared for but not fussed over as well yeah you know so some and also people change throughout your time with you so you know there's nothing in industry where, where i've worked before in bigger hotels and bigger restaurants bigger teams you know as as management level if you've got a team around you that work really well together and have common sense is the main one right so if someone comes to me and says oh what should i do about that plate over there well take it to the kitchen take it to wash up it's a, it's, a, it's an easy answer you know yeah. the answer you know so if you've got the if you've got the common sense to just go right i'm just going to go and do that you're already stepping up you're already pushing on and and i think as well you you only get out of anything something i've always said and i do a lot of work with colleges um you only get out of something what you're willing to put into it you give 110 percent, you're going to get 110 percent out of it you give 50 percent, you're going to get 50 percent out of it it's a sliding scale so you know if, if you're really passionate and keen and you want to build and you want to grow that for me is worth more than most other things you know if I, I was actually at, um, at a college west suffolk college yesterday doing a, another thing i do is called passion to inspire so it's, a, it's about inspiring the next level yeah. uh, the next the next set of industry um you know students coming through and it was amazing. We had eight teams competing, uh, seven teams competing, actually. And half the room was full of level one students. I mean, it, it was just wow. amazing to see them have the confidence to go yeah. into a competition. And actually, the skills that they all demonstrated, they blew us away as level one chefs who had been in the, in the, in the college for, what would it be, September, five months on a course. You're five months in, you're in a competition, and you're, you're putting up great food. It was so humbling to see because it's always the hardest thing i've always said to everyone when i go into the colleges you know, taking the first step is the hardest bit once you've taken the step and committed it's easy then like you know yeah. you know what you're doing but to have the courage and the um, confidence to jump into something like that is just great really yeah good. oh absolutely and i think like you say taking the first step is often like that point because as you said sort of at the start if it doesn't work for you you can always do something different isn't it and that flexibility yeah. and i guess probably really just to close bradley i'm sort of interested to hear if you were to go back and have a conversation with your younger self about careers what piece of careers advice do you think you'd give yourself probably it'd probably be really simple it would be don't stress about it like because you can and i remember you know friends and, and and people at school and sixth form and college they were so stressed about what am i going to do next what am i going to do next? we all were because you are you know you're going into the big wide world you're probably moving out from you you know living with your parents and you live on your own for your first time you've got a job or, or apprenticeship or whatever you may be doing and you do naturally stress about it but actually then you look back on it and you go why did i do that why did i stress about it and the other thing i'd probably say is that just take every opportunity you can like they're, they're specifically in hospitality as well and that translates into more industries but 
if someone, you know, go and knock on the door, send that employer an email to say, can I come and spend a week with you? I mean, at, at the moment, there is a skill shortage across hospitality. And if anyone is interested in doing it, you know, if you were to send an email to six to 12 restaurants and say, look, I really want to get into this industry, but I really want to come and see how you do things. Is there any chance I can come and spend a weekend with you? I'm going to hazard a guess that no, none of them will say no because they all need <laughs> that extra pair yeah. of hands at the minute, right? Um, and take every opportunity and just absorb things. Like the b- best part of my career is I did a two-year hotel management course. I moved around the country six months in four hotels, ranging from 32-bedroom coastal hotel in Devon, 50-bedroom country house hotel in Kent, 180-bedroom hotel near London in near Heathrow, and then uh, a, a, an eight-bedroom pub with rooms in Newmarket in Suffolk. Wow. And, um, you know, seeing how those, the, the hospitality industry is huge and seeing how each of those businesses ran their own way, it let me kind of finish that course and look at it and go, okay, well, I want to cherry pick a bit of that and take a bit of that and take a bit of that and take a bit of that and then put it all together. And ultimately, it's got me where I am today. So, you know, I can't, I'm, I'm very fortunate for that. And I've had great support from previous mentors and lecturers, et cetera, that they're always a good person to chat to. Um, and, and speak to people, you know, if anyone was to call me or, or you know, call the wine bar and say, look, I, you know, I heard you talk about employers, can, can we just have a chat? Of course, yeah, I'm, I'm never going to say no. Like, if you want to come into hospitality industry, I'm safeguarding my future, essentially, the, the, the industry that I love and I'm going to be in for a long time. Um, you know, so yeah, enjoy it and enjoy it. That's a fantastic message. Thank you so much for your time today. It's been Absolutely brilliant pleasure. to speak to you absolute pleasure and i mean and, and i do mean it. if anyone out there is listening and, and you do want to chat ping us an email send us you know give us a phone call on, on the the wine seller number whatever i'm always open to talk thank you no worries at all